Hello and welcome back, this is your boy Kamal once again, and today we have a really cool integral. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 by root 1 minus x squared times the logarithm of root 1 plus x plus 1 divided by root 1 plus x minus 1. Yeah, that's a lot going on here. Anyway, the structure of the integrand does provide a hint as to what kind of trigonometric substitution could work. So, let's make the substitution of x equal to cosine u. Now this implies that dx equals negative sine u du. Or we could write this as du equal to negative 1 by sine u dx. And what exactly is the sine of u in terms of the cosine of u? That would be root 1 minus cosine square u du. And what exactly is the cosine? Well, that's x. So we have negative 1 by root 1 minus x squared dx equal to du. That means we already have all the required ingredients for our transformed differential element. So i in the u world would be the integral from, let's see, for x to approach 0, we need u to approach 0. Uh, we, for x to approach 0, we need u to approach pi by 2. And for x to approach 1, we need u to approach 0. So that's the integral from pi by 2 to 0. And because of the differential element, we do have a negative sign. So we could just get rid of it by switching up the order of the integration, uh, the limits of integration. So integral 0 to pi by 2, we have all of that stuff boxed in yellow, absorbed into the differential element. And we're left with logarithm root 1 plus cosine u plus 1 divided by root 1 plus cosine u minus 1 integration with respect to u. Okay, cool. Now, the argument of this logarithm function can be simplified considerably. So let's do some algebraic manipulation here. We have this term here, root 1 plus cosine u minus 1. And we're going to expand it using the conjugate of the denominator. So we have 1 by, sorry, 1 plus cosine u in the square root plus 1 divided by root 1 plus cosine u plus 1. And on expansion, we get the square of root 1 plus cosine u plus 1 divided by, in the denominator, we have a minus b times a plus b sort of thing. So that would be 1 plus cosine u minus 1. Okay, cool. So that means we have root 1 plus cosine u plus 1 whole thing squared divided by cosine u. And this implies that the integral i is now the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm root 1 plus cosine u plus 1 squared divided by cosine u integration with respect to u. Now using the properties of the logarithm, we can write this as the integral from 0 to pi by 2, terribly sorry about that, of the logarithm of root 1 plus cosine u plus 1 whole thing squared. And using the properties of the logarithm, of course, we could write this as coefficient. So we have twice this integral minus the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm of cosine u du. And this integral here is one of Euler's famous log trig integrals, which sorts out to negative pi by 2 times log 2. So that means we have the two negatives canceling out, and the integral i equals pi by 2 log 2 plus twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm of root 1 plus cosine u plus 1 du. We now shift our attention to this newly formed integral, and we'll start off with the 1 plus cosine u term in the argument of the logarithm. We can expand this using the double angle formula for the cosine function, whereby we have cosine u equal to 2 times cosine square u by 2 minus 1. In other words, this thing is equal to 1 plus cosine u. And this implies that i equals pi by 2 times log 2 plus twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 terribly sorry about that, of the logarithm of, let's see what we have, because of the square root, we have root 2 
times the cosine of u by 2 plus 1 du. And again, using the properties of the logarithm, we could write this as a sum of two integrals if we factor out a root 2 from the argument of the logarithm. So we have pi by 2 times log 2 plus twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm of root 2 factored out, leaving us with 1 by root 2 plus cosine u by 2 integration with respect to u. That means we have pi by 2 log 2 plus twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log root 2 du plus the integral from 0 to pi by 2 and of course this factor of 2 of the logarithm of 1 by root 2 plus cosine u du. And this integral here is just going to sort out to 2 times pi by 2 times log root 2, which could be written as 1 half of log 2, some cancellation. That means we have pi by 2 log 2 plus pi by 2 log 2, implying that the target integral i equals pi times log 2 plus twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm of what exactly is 1 by root 2? Isn't that exactly what the cosine of pi by 4 evaluates out to? So we now have a sum of cosines, and we can add them using the addition formula for cosines, which sorts out to, okay, so we have pi times log 2 plus twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm, and on adding the cosines, we have 2 times cosine pi by 4 plus u by 2 divided by 2 times cosine pi by 4 minus u by 2 divided by 2. Okay, cool. And now again, using the properties of the logarithm, we have two more integrals. We have pi times log 2 plus twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log we also have a factor of 2, so it's log 2 du first. And again, this thing would give us pi by 2 times log 2 times 2. So that thing would be pi times log 2, right? So let me just write this over here. We have 2 pi log 2 now, plus twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log cosine u by 2 plus pi by 4 divided by 2 times the cosine of pi by 4 minus u by 2 divided by 2 integration with respect to u. And wait a second, I wanted to write this as two separate integrals. So here we go. 2 times integral 0 to pi by 2 of logarithm pi by 4 minus u by 2. Oh, terribly sorry about that. What am I doing? Cosine pi by 4 minus u by 2 divided by 2 du. Now the two integrals we have do look quite strange, but we can reduce them to an integral we've solved many, many times here on the channel by a couple of nice substitutions. First up, we're going to let pi by 4 plus u by 2 divided by 2 equal v. Now, what does this mean for the differential element? This implies that du would be 4 times dv. And as far as the limits are concerned, as u approaches pi by 2, we have pi by 4 plus pi by 4 divided by 2. So that means v is just going to approach pi by 4. And as u approaches 0, we have v approaching pi by 4 divided by 2, which is, of course, pi by 8. Okay, cool. So this implies that the integral i equals 2 pi log 2 plus the integral 8 times the integral, that is because of this factor of 2 and then the factor of 4 because of the differential element. Integral 0 to, uh, no, it's the integral from pi by 8 to pi by 4 of log cosine v dv. Now, what about the last integral. Again, we need a similar substitution here. We're going to take this pi by 4 minus u by 2 term and let it equal to, wait, this thing is being divided by 2, so we're going to let it equal to w. 
This implies that du is going to be negative 4 times dw. And as u approaches pi by 2, we have w approaching 0. Okay. And as u approaches 0, we have w approaching pi by 8. So this is going to turn into an integral from pi by 8 to 0, but the differential element has a negative sign. We can get rid of that by switching up the limits of integration. So we have plus 8 times the integral from 0 to pi by 8 of log cosine w dw. And of course, the dummy variable's name doesn't matter. It could be u, v, or w, whatever. That means we can combine these two integrals here into a single integral, and we have 2 pi log 2 plus 8 times the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of log cosine v dv. Terribly sorry about that. And this is an integral that we've evaluated many, many times here on the channel. So I'm just going to reference the result we have for it from my script here for today's video. So according to my script, the solution to this integral is to restore Germany to her former glory. Wait a second, that does not make sense. Oh, wait, terribly sorry. I seem to have gotten my scripts mixed up again. This is the script I wrote in case I got rejected from art school in Vienna. And now for the actual script, where is that? Ah, here it is. Here it is. So the result of this integral is in fact negative pi by 4 times log 2 minus 1 half of Catalan's constant. Multiplying out that stuff by 8, this implies that i equals 2 pi log 2 minus 2 pi log 2 minus 4 times Catalan's constant, some lovely cancellation. And this implies that our really cool integral is actually another integral representation of Catalan's constant, the original top G. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do give me a follow on Instagram as well and support the, ch support the channel on Patreon if you like the content and you think that this is useful and stuff. And of course, if you want to, whatever. Thank you. See you next time.